Empire. Hello and welcome to another live stream edition of the John Kyrie Report, the pre-draft edition. As you can see, I'm joined by my pal Bram Weinstein, the voice of the Commanders. We are going to talk about the draft. Don't forget, give us a like, give us a follow. You can subscribe to the show, go into any, wherever you get your podcast, go to Empire Media. You can join, you can find us there, A-M-P-I-R-E. Always much appreciated when you tune in. And if you want to become a member of the show, you can go there, use your laptop, go to the Empire Media YouTube page, see the word join, click on there. A couple of reminders before Bram and I get going here. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to have John Jansen on the show in the next few days. And we talk a little bit about J.J. McCarthy, just a little bit, but a lot about his memories from playing here, some fun Joe Gibbs period memories, but also offensive line play. Just there's a lot of concern about this line, Bram, or just where can it be? How can coaching help? How can scheme help? John knows all that stuff. So, Bram, today we heard from Adam Peters and Lance Newmark. And I will say I've heard good things about Newmark. We'll see how it plays out over the season, over the next few years. But what stood out to you today? Um, I mean, not really a ton. I mean, I didn't expect them to reveal very much. Um, they went out of their way, or Adam Peters did, to spend the majority of the beginning of the press conference thanking literally everybody by name, which I thought was interesting that they did that. And the only thing that was really newsworthy was that Adam Peters, you know, he didn't say it was it, it, there was no chance they would trade out, but made it sound like it was almost a definitive that they were going to stay. And, and not that at two. Not that I think, not that I think that's a really big surprise or it's any revelatory thing, but it does take that off the table. I mean, it was always this hanging thing that someone like Minnesota or the Raiders or someone we're not thinking about wants to trade up to get probably Jaden Daniels. And it seems that they've taken that off the table and they are going to select a quarterback at number two. Very much so. And the other thing that stood out too is they they understand that there is some pressure with all these picks. And like, they're not running from that because you have six picks in the top 100, but you got to get num the second pick right. That's why they're taking their time. Now, the other thing he said, Bram, was that they, listen, we've been saying this. They haven't yet settled on their guy. It doesn't mean they don't think they know who their guy is, but they haven't settled for sure. Like they're going to meet and go over all the top 30 visits and just kind of finalize everything. So I think we all agree that they probably have a strong lean toward a guy. They just haven't said, okay, you, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Let's meet again tomorrow. Let's meet again the next day and make sure we still are on the same page with this particular player. So early next week is probably when they'll know. And as he said, you don't need to know until you need to know. So when they make their pick, that's when they have to know for sure. I think they'll know a little bit before then, but that was, but that's not a really big surprise either. Um, and, you know, as far as the trading goes, the hard part with the – they're not trying to play hardball here with that. That's not what they're doing. Like, teams know that – teams have known – other teams have known that they want to stay at number two, which tells you that they like these quarterbacks more than the package you get. The other problem is, too, Brand, with trading back, let's say you – let's say Minnesota wanted to move up. You're not guaranteed of getting one of the guys you like at 11, which is where right. Minnesota would be. So then you're running the risk of, you know, and if you, I mean, maybe you like Michael Penix enough to draft him that high. I don't know. I, I just, I would have a hard time seeing that just given the health history, but you know, if that's your guy, but like, you're still not guaranteed of anything. And that's why, that's partly why I think that they're just going to like stay put at two, get the guy you like. And I think they can also take that tack Bram because six picks in the top 100, they have ammo in this draft. Yeah. And they obviously have a lot of things they need to do, but the reality is that they need to get a quarterback and they're in a really great position for that. There are a lot of really viable candidates to do it with. I do think that I, I don't know how, how they feel about perception. You know, that that's something I don't know them well enough to know the answer to anything like that. I do think a selection of JJ McCarthy would have a ripple effect in the fan base um, over the other two, assuming Caleb Williams obviously is gone, over the other two, Daniels or May. And I do think this is really a choice between Daniels and May. And frankly, like, 
I don't know where they're going to go. Like I thought by now I would, but I really don't know where they're going to go. And I, I was kind of at like 60, 40 Daniels. My preference in watching him has been Daniels. This is of course, not knowing either one of these players, they've been getting to know the players a little bit, but as the days have progressed, Schefter backtracking on go buy your Jaden Daniels Jersey, Daniel Jeremiah saying things like I'd pick Daniels, but knowing Adam Peters, the way I do, I think they may go Drake may. I really do feel at this point, it's like 50, 50 and I'll just stick to my guns and go 51, 49 Daniels. But I do think it's going to be one of those two. Right. And I think the other with Adam, the other thing with Adam, with the whole Jersey thing, you know, I talked to him and he's, kind of kidding about that but what he wasn't kidding about has been the signals and signs pointing to buying jerseys is a definitive statement that's it's not what you you know i know i know adam and, and i know because i've had conversation with him about this it's always signals and signs point to this and i would still say that that but i think what we don't know is fully what does this group truly value in the quarterbacks and I like Jaden Daniels a lot. Like the more I've watched him and there, there are certainly concerns with each of these quarterbacks. What I like with Daniels, he checks the boxes, man. He's not like, you know, there's not, I mean, the guy works. He does. All, and plus he has all that talent. The assumption seems to be that he stopped improving or that he won't improve as much. I don't think you can assume that just because he's a little bit older. I mean, it's also, he started putting in um, a certain style of work over the last couple of years and it paid off. So this, there, I think you can still get better, but I also see with Drake may like, would that appeal to them maybe in a different way? And, um, you know, just because of the size and, 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 you know, the durability that comes with that and the strong arm that he has. And, you know, it's funny, I was talking to somebody over at the facility one time is like, you know, about like a, a Gibbs type quarterback. Well, that would be like a Drake may just because he loved the size. Um, but, the other, the other part too, and somebody just brought this up on there about the adversity. Jaden has faced that too. I mean, you go from, you know, you go to a new school, you know, you, there are some things going on there. Like he's had to do that and in the, in the toughest conference. So the other, the other part though, of course, and I, I want to address emoji gate from the other night with the agent, with the little, you know, a little emoji and what that meant. And clearly they were not happy with, all the quarterbacks coming in at one time. I've talked to, I talked to a few people today, like in the league, like, what did you think of them all coming in together? Nobody really had a problem with that. And I talked to other people like with this, because I know somebody like, Oh, well, because the agent did this, you can't draft the player. Like nobody told me that. Like someone was like, once you draft them, like you're not dealing with the agent, you know, is the kid good. And the kid, there are no, I haven't heard anybody say a bad word about Jaden Daniels, the person. So I, you know what I mean? So I just like that whole thing is much ado about nothing. And I will say it's not something you should be doing, you know, for an agent. Cause you, you have to understand what, how it impacts your guy. But as far as like this team goes in him, it shouldn't have any impact. Uh, my take on that was one. I don't know his intentions cause I've never spoken to his agent. So I don't know. Um, this was either a really bad idea by him to weigh in at all on, or he's speaking on behalf of his client. And that's where I'm not really sure, like where we are on that. Like, is he saying this because Jane Daniels didn't like this? Or is he saying this because he didn't like this? And if that, then he's not doing a very good job advocating on behalf of his client who could be the number two pick. And if he isn't, it costs him money to not be the number two pick. So I don't really totally understand why he did what he did. I also don't know what his intentions were. I also don't think it's a big deal. Like they went out and went to top golf team and they did a group thing. Other teams have done this with a number of players. If the quarterbacks are so turned off by being part of something like that, then I think it's a little telling that they don't want to be part of the group or they want to be shortly and that's another reason why i don't understand why the agent would weigh in it gives off this like impression that and he probably didn't even mean it this way that my guy wants to be treated differently than everybody else really like that's the impression you want to give to a fan base or to anybody else so i'm not uh, you know assigning anything to what he did 
I just didn't really understand the purpose of it. And I didn't think it was very productive on his client's behalf at all. I'd have a hard time believing that Jaden would say something where he'd want to put that out like that. It's just what makes sense. I have talked to people who know Jaden very well, who said the two teams that he wants to see, he would like to see him go to one would be Washington. One would be Minnesota because of the, in part, because like his point was because the coaching that he feels like he's going to get in, in either one of those places. And just because the coach they have in the staff, they understand the position very well. And I think, you know, they got the play callers in particular. So I think, so I, I don't think it's a matter of this kid, you know, anything like that. So I think it's much ado about nothing. And I do think like the other question with the two is, and it was kind of asked in the press conference and gets brought up here and um, about the ceiling and the potential, you know, the, the, the narrative has been that Drake may has a higher ceiling. Do you completely buy that? No. Why? I don't know why people keep saying that. I, I, why? Because he's a few years younger and he's played less. I mean, is that is that where that opinion is is coming from? Like, I, I mean, here's what I know about Daniels. Like, I watched a lot of him at Arizona State. He was young, and then I watched a lot of him at LSU, and he got a lot better, considerably better, to the point where he won the Heisman Trophy and was dominant player last year. And if it wasn't for Caleb Williams, might very easily be the number one pick in the draft this year. So his ceiling, like, so you're suggesting he's topped out by going from a lower tier conference to a higher tier conference against better competition where he got better, you can't open your mind to the idea that there's still room to grow, but because May hasn't had that level of experience or played that caliber of opponents, frankly, that there still is room to grow because he's a little bit younger. Like, I don't, I don't buy that stuff. I, I do believe either one of them are going to have an adjustment period here. Like, I don't think like one comes in and is definitively CJ Stroud and the other one needs two years sitting on the bench to figure out how to be a quarterback. I just don't totally buy all of that. I think in the end, this team needs to pick the person they're most comfortable with. They're both very high caliber prospects, but they're prospects. And I, and I, I do believe that like, this is a incredibly difficult decision because it's not obvious. Like, I don't think it's obvious. Like it's one thing I think the bears have like incredible options in front of them, but the choice they're making perceptually is obvious. Like that's the person they have to go with. And for Washington, they could go either way here. And the chances of both being great are slim. So they're going to be defined by what is this first enormous decision that they're going to make. And I don't blame them for taking all the time that they need to try to figure out exactly who that person is to take a chance on because that's what they're doing. They're taking a chance on someone being a franchise quarterback here. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. Well, that's why I never minded this, whole, like, this idea that they had to somehow know it. They probably knew. If you think that, like, you haven't paid attention to how this group operates, but I like the, because my fear, my concern would be, let's say you settle on a guy uh, three weeks ago. And then over the next three weeks to a month, you find out something more, but you're set on this guy already. Then, you know, maybe you're picking them to pick on the wrong guy because, well, you know, we've already settled on him and you didn't, maybe you overlooked something in the process that you realize later that, oh, we should have paid more attention to that. So that's why I think go through it. You don't have to know right now and then, and do it. So, um, and yeah, Grim points out Josh Allen developed just fine out of Wyoming. There are a lot of guys who have not. And that's the problem. Like there's, there's, you know, six round picks, one six round pick became the greatest quarterback of all time. So, you know, you, you don't, you, it's hard to go one-to-one because he's not Josh Allen, but I think where like with Allen, I think where, where the comparison, what you would hope is the work that goes into trying to get better. And I think that's where for, if you're Drake may a Drake may fan, he's going to put in that work. I think Jaden Daniels will too. And I think JJ McCarthy would too. But I think between the two, um, both May and Downs would do that. 
But that's where it's like, okay, if you're young and you do that and you fix the footwork and you fix the delivery a little bit, but there's also the other part is where is the, does his processing speed increase as well? Cause he's going to see a lot more different defenses. I mean, Daniel saw more variety of defenses in the sec than, than may did in the ACC for sure. So how's that going to look for him? And if he is a guy that has to go sit for a little bit, how long are you willing to wait to do that? And, and I don't, think here you want to wait that long do you no no not at all and it, it, this is the other thing that I think is really important here and you know I think it's something that will touch a nerve with everybody like this organization um the way it had been run for a long time I don't believe had the proper support system maybe in, in certain times it did maybe when Joe Gibbs was here Mike Shanahan to a certain degree but that got undermined by what was happening in and around his team but the support system here is completely, utterly different. And we don't know if it's going to work or not because they haven't been put to the test of whether it's going to work or not. But I do believe that all players, when they come into any situation, the one of the biggest factors, not only just their work ethic, their talent, their ability to get better, but it matters what's around them. This coaching staff, the front office, the support staff, all the things that the ownership's trying to do to make the building better, the area better, the fan base feel better about everything. You know, like, I think that that really matters here. And so either way that they go and assuming it's one of these two, um, however long it takes, it's going to end up coming down to all of the people supporting that process, because I don't expect Jaden Daniels, if he's the pick to be CJ Stroud, like, I hope he is, but like, I don't expect that out of a rookie in the same way I wouldn't expect it out of Drake may, but is this organization prepared to develop somebody like Josh Allen was developed in Buffalo over the long haul. It's going to have a lot to do with this coaching staff, Cliff Kingsbury, Dan Quinn, Adam Peters, everything that happens in and around it. And that's where we're kind of in a very different day. And I'm very optimistic about all of that, but they haven't played a game together. So we don't know what this is going to be. It feels really good. It feels really different. I hope it's going to be really different. And for either one of these quarterbacks, I'm optimistically believing they're walking into a very different situation than in the past. Uh, but until they get out there and prove that and show the patience you're talking about, which, which whatever direction they go, um, then we'll know the true story of how things develop as a team and with the this specific player. I think the support stuff is a big deal. Um, just, I think that's a big deal just because, you know, Last year, they talked about having a plan for Sam Howell. Well, the plan wasn't very good because I think they just hoped they had a plan, but they didn't really have a plan to help him. And they, you know, they're helping him was, hey, let's have him throw 67% of the time or whatever it was. Not a good plan. Like when you talk to these guys, like they understand how do you help a rookie quarterback? You get the, you got to build up that defense, get some playmakers on defense or get, take away the ball on defense, get a running game. And I do believe we'll see the run game. You know, get people, get talent around this quarterback that can help. Like, that's why I think they're going to get a tight end in this draft. You know, pair him with Zach Ertz, get, you know, McLaurin, Dotson, you know, whomever else they add over there. And to, and to have an attack that can help a young quarterback. Don't put all the burden on his shoulders like they did with Howell. You know, it's funny because I talked to a coach who was here last year. It was like, he felt like Howell was the best player on offense last year. It's just that they just had a, not a great plan around him. And I think that's where I think it's one of the ways it's better is I think they understand with a rookie, you have to approach it like this. So whoever it is, and that's why I say, if they take Drake May, I see why I can see why, but also I, you also have to respect they've put in a little bit more work than calling up an all 22 on Google and watching a couple hours of Jaden Daniels and Drake May. There's a lot of stuff behind the scenes. You also like what we don't know is what were these quarterbacks asked to read? How often are they making the right read within that? How quickly are they doing that within the context of the offense? And there's sometimes like, for example, I'm watching the Ohio state spring game the other day. And there was one time there's a, a red zone touchdown pass, right? And they have Ryan day standing right there. And it's like, it looks like it's a boom, boom play. And they asked him, what, what'd you think of that play? Ryan? He goes, he, he took too long. And so like, because you know that over time, that little split second will add up to, right? So like, those are the things we don't know. That's what they know. So 
I always laugh when like, people like you, you know, they don't, you got to see it through their eyes. Like the work they put in is way more than all of us combined. And so like, that's why I say you just, if they take a guy that you don't want, you just get to hope, well, hopefully they've done the right work and got the right guy. That's what you're going to, you know, so it's a matter of trust. It's a matter of trust, Bram. It, it is a matter of trust. And it's also like, but there's also what can't be overlooked here. And this is why I keep leaning Daniels is his athleticism's off the charts. Um, and that is something that may can't replicate like his zero to 20 vacating the pocket is going to be top five for a quarterback in the NFL, maybe top three. Um, you know, if he develops into a quarterback who, who is able to extend and he should be able to extend a lot of plays with his legs, but do so by virtue with his arm, he could be as dangerous as any quarterback in the NFL off script is so important now. Uh, but it's the ones who are able to extend plays with their arm and not just with their legs that are the ones that are ultimately successful. That package seems to be evident in him. Um, I've read all these stories about his work ethic, where he's the guy showing up at 530 in the morning and wanting to get better and better and better. Herm Edwards is raving about him. Brian Kelly is raving about him. They said they had to kick him out of the building at times. They had to change rules about how often players could come in here because he was first in last out. So like, and it's so obvious just you could tell in his demeanor how important it is to him to get better and better and better. And that's why I hate hearing about this. Like, well, maybe he maxed out at LSU. Well, if he went from where he was at Arizona state to where he did at LSU and it matters this much to him, why don't you think he's going to get just better in the NFL when he adjusts to it? So for me, that athleticism is just a difference making quality. I don't think he's, it doesn't read like if you watch the LSU games, that he's going to make one read and run, which is the scary part of a quarterback at that age, like Lamar Jackson kind of did, uh, Justin Fields kind of did because they leaned on the athleticism. It does. It feels like he's ahead of that style of curve, maybe even ahead of like Allen. And if there is room to grow, then you have an ultimate weapon. And that's why I think in the end, it's going to be very hard to pass him up but I'm still considering just the way the wind has been blowing lately. I do think it's close to 50, 50. They go either way. I, I, right. And that's a, you know, I think we can all feel like they could have a lean, but nothing's going to surprise me here because again, Ben Johnson, Ben Johnson, Ben Johnson. And then it was it. now there was a reasons behind it, but I'm not even convinced that Ben Johnson would be an interview that he would have been better in their minds than Dan Quinn. We don't know that, but I think the other thing that's interesting here with, with Jaden is, you know, one of the things that I think you, they're going to want to see is maybe a little bit stronger ability to drive some throws to the outside, not on the fade balls. We've seen them do that, but on those quick outs, being able to drive the ball. Some of that is a little bit of a, a technique and fundamentals with their lower half. What he's really good at though, is marrying the feet with the eyes. And I think that's one thing that Drake has to work on. Um, but, you know, again, uh, to me, Bram, some of this, it's, it's interesting because there's an analytics bent to this as well. And the analytics crowd is going to—they're going to point to that pressure to sack ratio, which has become this buzzword this over the last year. Yep. And you know, sometimes with him, it's not as great. But as I've talked on here, there's not a com there's not one theme to the issues that he's had in that area. And what we also don't know is like how many times are they providing an answer for him on some of these throws. You could say it about other quarterbacks too, I suppose. But I do think it's funny because I think, and from an analytics standpoint. It seems like they favor Drake May, but pretty much every coach or a person I talk to will say Jaden. In fact, I talked to um, Mark Ross, the former GM, was like he, he felt like the the gap between Caleb and Jaden was more close than the gap between Jaden and then the third guy. So yeah. you know, for whatever that's worth, and so someone else is going to have a different take. And it, again, it you know, what do these guys want? And that's the hard part to answer because. That's what we don't know. And even when they make the decision, Bram, like they're not going to sit there and tell everybody. I can almost guarantee it'd be like Dan Quinn, Peters, and then Josh Harris will be the ones to know. And then maybe on the day of, maybe others find out. But I don't think they're going to be sitting there saying, okay, here's our guy. Let's go. There's going to be a couple guys who might know, which is fine. Trades, free agents, quarterbacks, and all kinds of adventures await the commanders this offseason. Looking for an adventure of your own? The Adventure Park at Sandy Spring has you covered. The country's largest ropes course and zipline park located in Montgomery County, Maryland is now open. Named Best Amusement Park and Climbing Destination in the DMV two years in a row, 
The Adventure Park at Sandy Spring is perfect for birthdays, corporate outings, groups, and families. With challenges anywhere from beginner to expert, there is something for all skill levels. Anytime you're thinking about reaching new heights, make sure you know before you go. The Adventure Park at Sandy Spring is the only ACCT accredited park in Maryland or Virginia. Staying on the ground, give axe throwing a try. You can throw at traditional targets or play any number of interactive games. You can even upload your own image. So there you have it, folks. Climbing, zip lining, axes, food, and bonfires right in your backyard. Reserve your adventure today at www.theadventurepark.com backslash kind. That's www.theadventurepark.com backslash kind. But the other part is you have, you know, you have in the second round two high picks. Do you favor staying there or would, you know, and if there is there a guy that you like there or would you rather trade back into the first round and maybe, you know, get some of these other positions in the third? So I think they have three significant void positions that need to be addressed one way or the other, whether it's in the draft or outside of quarterback. Um or through the second wave free agency once the draft is done. They have to get a left tackle. Like, that is beyond clear. Um, to me, it reads like there's a viable solution here. There's a lot of tackles that are going to go in the first to early second round. Let's see how the board's shaken out. If these tackles, if there's a run on them early, then you may feel like it's necessary to get into the teens or low 20s to get one that you like and have earmarked that you want. If the board goes a little differently than expected, maybe you feel like you're just going to land on one of the two or three guys that you really want with that second pick, overall pick in the second round, and that would just be great if it works out that way. I do think that they have the option, and I think that they should seriously take a look at that option um, of moving back up to get a tackle because it's so necessary, and I really don't know what they're going to do in the second wave of free agency. I still think they need a number one corner or at least another starting corner. That doesn't feel like that's happening early in the draft. Um, and considering, I think we both know that they feel the necessity, and I agree with this, that they want to get a good young pass catching tight end. There are some really good viable options for that in the draft. They have another high second round pick and a few third round picks. So I wouldn't be surprised if they nab what they think is a really starting caliber worthy or bridge year Zach Ertz worthy tight end to become a weapon from that position and nab that early, but you can't do all of these things. That's the point. You can't literally do all of those things with the first few picks, especially if you trade back in to address left tackle. So in my mind, there's a priority here. I think they got to address left tackle in the, in the draft. Like I don't, I don't see there's any way around it. And if they just land on it early in the second round, great. But if they trade back in, it wouldn't surprise me. I think they're going to get a tight end because there's really good ones to draft and they'll do so probably with one of those high second round picks. And then the third round picks, did they use one to get back into the first? We'll see. And with all of that, what happens now at corner? Because that needs to be addressed too, in my opinion. And it feels like that's either some kind of trade or it's you're doing something in the second wave of free agency. And there are some name corners that are still out there. So maybe they get somebody that bridges them for a year. Cause I don't think they can check all of the boxes. And that's kind of the order that I see. I still think receiver is something they could look at too, but I don't think that that's a, a, a pressing need. Like some of these other positions are. I would agree with that. So there's, I got a couple of schools of thought on, on the, that whole thing. There's, First of all, on the podcast that came out this morning, I talked about these top 30 visits. And one of the players was Roger Rosengarten, the a tackle. Now, he's played mostly right tackle. But my understanding now is some teams see him at being able to do both. He is a good athlete. So he'd be a guy, an interesting guy to watch. So they're like, there's some names that we haven't seen that would be higher up that some team, like his range is pretty vast. Like he could go late first. He could go late third. So if they like him, I could see him taking a guy like say, okay, this break in this right is breaking right. Maybe just stick with your two second round picks and get the tackle there. And then, you know, and then, and then um, a tight end. And then I, I also think high up for them would be an edge rusher yeah. and a corner. I'm with you on that. So, but the other thing to watch, Bram, and I was talking to a scout about this 
And he's like, his point was, I would do what I could to get more draft capital for next year. So because it's the end of the COVID, the whole COVID player, I guess. So the guys who were able to stay in there extra, an extra year, that's all off the tables now. So more guys are going to be in the draft next year in part because of that. So the draft next year is supposed to be really, really deep. And he's like, I would get as much capital as I could for that particular draft. So, and I don't know that they would do that. Maybe you, maybe you take a lower round pick and, you know, you, maybe you swap something and you get another pick for next year. I don't know if they would do that, but it is something that it was interesting to hear how deep it might be. But for this one, if they stay there, I'm okay doing that and getting either a tight end or an edge rusher at, at that second pick in the second round, just because, you know, you have a chance to really, especially man, Bram, if they think about this, they could come out of this draft with a, with their quarterback for, for a, a while, their left tackle for a while, and maybe an edge rusher for a while. So yeah. three premium spots could be taken care of for this team for a while. And that would put them in a really good spot with the cap and everything. Yeah, I love the idea of getting a really good high-end tight end, too. That's become something that, you know, good offenses have leaned on. Uh, there are a few of them that really stand out, and I think they're going to be available for them that they don't have to move for to just go get uh, with the second-round pick. So I feel like that that's something that can, will, and should be addressed. It's left tackle that's the one that is such a glaring need to me. I don't know how you can I don't know how you can put a rookie quarterback out there, especially one that you're oh, uh, announcing to the world is going to need some time to develop and you don't have proper protection around them. So I think it's going to be addressed in the draft or bare minimum in free agency. And then corner might be hanging out there. Receiver might be hanging out there. I'm with you on edge rusher too. But it, with all this draft capital, they can't literally do everything. So that's part of the kind of the story here too. They baseline the roster. They have really good draft capital to address a lot of needs, but they're not going to get everything they need. And it's going to take a year before they come around on the other side again, where they will have a lot of cap space again. They don't have a lot of like major contracts that are kind of hindering the team moving forward. And they should be able to build on this, but this is an enormous moment for this team. Not only are they expected to get a franchise quarterback, six picks in the top 100, this should be a franchise changing draft. And I think Adam Peters and Newmark both kind of acknowledged that, that they recognize that this is the moment that we're going to look back on to see, did everything really change on the trajectory of this team becoming an annual contender? Yeah. And you know, the funny thing is, is I talked to, I talked to somebody in the league too, or like, you know, they already kind of started changing things with that free agency class. Not that it's like this super duper class, but it's the way they approach it and the kind of guys they brought in. But this draft class is crucial to setting it up. I mean, they haven't, Bram, like, they may only have eight former players um, or eight former or eight of their draft picks starting this year, maybe at most eight. So I think that's, that's a problem. Like you cannot build a sustained winner with that kind of poor draft record. And you're talking to, I talked to some coaches from here last year and they're talking about, um, you know, you, you, they're talking about the poor evaluation process. And when you listen to Adam Peters and Newmark talk, um, it's just very different. And by the way, Ed B says he wouldn't, either, he thinks there's better value in the third or fourth round with tight ends. I don't know that everybody would agree with that. I don't, especially like you're assuming that they all like them the same. I think there's, it's, I'm not sure that the same depth is there with the tight end class. I don't 100%. think there's going to be somewhere it's a little bit more mixed on. So I don't, I think for some of the, and especially like when you look at the guys they brought in for the top 30 visits, those are second round guys, Sanders, Sanders and, and, and Wiley are the two, two of the guys that they brought in. Those are probably second round guys. So it may be what you could do too, Bram is maybe trade back in the second round to get another pick maybe for next year, but and put yourself because they maybe 40 might be too high for a guy like one of the, like Wiley or someone like that. But if you trade back now, maybe you get them. So maybe to his point to, I guess I'd say for Ed's point, that could be maybe, you know, late second might be, risking it but early third might be too far so maybe they're there maybe i shouldn't be dismissive of that too much but but um it is i do think like that would be something good to get and um because i they want to play a lot of 12 person i think they're going to want to play a lot of 12 personnel and so i do think tight end is a very strong chance and um so you know that you're right this could be a franchise altering draft yeah, I, if I had to like kind of forecast it, obviously a quarterback's being taken at number two. I think it'll be 
uh, May or Daniels. I can't imagine it would be anyone other than one of those two. Once we get around to the second round, um, I think this will be this will this will depend. If the right tackle is there for a modest jump back into the first round, I think they're going to do it. Um, if they feel like they can wait it out and get lucky at the top of the second round, I think they'll wait and do that and take that tackle there with that second second round pick. I'm with you. I think the options are: Do you trade back a little bit and then maybe get your tight end a little later in the second round, or do you just jump at it there? And I'm with you on edge. Like Samuel wrote, like Chop Robinson would be a luxury pick. I agree. Like if he's somehow available with that second second round pick, or maybe even that first second round pick, I think that's a possibility too that they would take someone like that. The reality is, like there still are kind of too many holes to all be addressed. When you haven't thing, when you haven't won anything in a long time, there's no such thing as a luxury pick. You get talent. And if you think Chop Robinson is a talent, you get that mother on that plane here in a hurry, right? Because you need blue chip talent. This isn't about like this isn't about this year. This is about the next five, 10 years. And if you think and that guy's pretty good. So if you have a chance to get him and you like him and you think he's the best on your board, you take him. I don't care that they signed three, three edge guys in the offseason. That that dude could be a if he hits, can be a difference maker. But I think it's you, you know, like again. They haven't won anything in a while. Get good players. Start yeah. with that. Don't worry about the position. Draft good players. You know, if you take two tackles in this draft, I applaud that because you're going to want to do something on the right side, whether it's, you know, whether it's after the draft or after the season, you're going to want to do something on that right side. And so if you have, and that's why I talked about on the podcast today about there are, there are several guys that you look at and as far as tackles go, who would be projected in that fourth round range. Now I will say, some of them, it's funny because some of those guys, you, you maybe some teams might feel like um, some of those guys could play on the left side, but I still think they're more, some of those are more developmental. So left or right side, but that's not a guaranteed starter. So I think I would come, I would try to come out of there with two tackles. Like the way I, the problem is we're talking about all this stuff. Like they kind of need 15 picks to accomplish a lot of this. Um, but um yeah, I mean, but I think they have a real chance to to set their lineup. That's why I say, don't worry about if you have too much at that position because next year you won't. And yeah. you, you know, those guys, the only other one that I and it feels also pro bowler. The one that's fallen through the cracks, I think, through all of this and this planning is corner, and I do think it needs to be addressed. And I do think it's screaming like obviously they'll probably pick one somewhere along the way in this draft, maybe in the third round. But I do believe that they're going to have to land on a veteran in the second wave of free agency to kind of fill a hole and get somebody out there who's going to play a lot of downs. I agree. That's Because here's the other thing, Bram, that we don't know how Emmanuel Forbes is going to look in this defense. And if he's going to want to play a lot of press man, I don't know how he's going to fare in that if it's a heavy dose, right? And, you know, how will St. Juice fare in there? So I think you're going to want to still – um, I think you're still going to want to um, address that position. And I also wanted to, like Dan Lottie says, seems like waiting to get a tackle in the second round might be a little bit risky. Dan, I tend to agree. Here's the difference, though. Some of these guys we're talking about, it's going to be like some teams may have, let's say, Rosengarten again. Some teams may have him as a late second round guy. Other teams may have him high second round guy. Or other teams may have him a right tackle in the third round. Other teams may have them a guy who can play left tackle and go in there. So there may be a guy that they really like that when you look at the big boards of the analysts, it's not going to, it's not like teams are the same way with these guys. And when you talk to some people, they'll, they'll often tell you that the gap between player eight and player 12 on a board isn't usually that big. So I don't, I don't know if it's as big a risk as we might think it is depending on how they feel about these players. And I think, I keep bringing up Rosengarten because I think he he would be one to watch in that range. But but I I'm going to agree it's a little bit of a risk, except that we don't know all that they think about some of these players. That's that's the hard part to always know in these situations, and you're kind of going based on piecing it together what others have said. But we don't. It's not again. Teams have can have very different takes on players. I mean that, we've seen it. Yeah. Hopefully our guys' takes will be correct. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, 
Anyways, but Bram, fortunately, fortunately, Bram, it's only one more week. At this time, at this time next week, they will probably be on the clock. And this will all end. Next year at this time, Bram, we might be talking about, you know, which linebacker should they take with the 20th pick or 19th, whatever it is, you know, something like that. And so it's going to be a far different conversation than it was this offseason. I just hope, and I would say this too. Somebody asked me this a couple, like a week ago, a student um, at Alabama, Quinn, shout out Quinn if you're watching or listening. But he asked me about like, what would I tell the fans about like this period right now? And I thought for a minute, I'd like embrace this. Last year, we're talking about a sale and who's going to get it and all this nonsense involved with the sale. The previous two years, a lot of it was dominated by the offseason by investigations. Now it's just about quarterback. Embrace that and, and you know, take it for what it is. Like, it's a better conversation than we've had. And I will say this. If they get it right, then it's going to be – it could be a lot of fun for you guys. And if not, then there's going to be a lot of angst that's going on here, as, as there always is, Bram. So there you go.